An Ashfield apartment building has been evacuated due to cracking. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Looks like we have another building in Sydney that's been evacuated due to cracking. And I've got an article here from the Sydney Morning Herald that we'll have a look at. But before we go through that, let's jump and look at a few other things. We'll go to the Google Earth here and we can see this is the complex here, as you can see along. And right next to it, right next to it, we have a you know, waterway. So obviously flood mitigation. Now, when I'm finding these things and having a look at them, I try and identify if they're anywhere near what I call, what I call the, where is it? Construction issues or the triangle of fail. And if we zoom out, you know, we're still reasonably well away from the triangle of fail, but it is another issue, another, well, another building with construction issues. The triangle of fail I call between Mascot, Zetland and Sugar Cube. And a lot of the issues here you have as well as traditionally this used to be an industrial area of Sydney. And there's a lot of land contamination and it's all seeping down to Botany Bay. But if we have a look over here, we've got, you know, the water coming along here. We've got, you know, these buildings which are only only three stories high with a basement car park. So you're thinking, oh, it's not as not as complex as some of the towers that have had the issues. But then again, the basement adds a level of complexity to it. So I was clicking here and there's also, if you hover here, you can see underneath, underneath this building, what do we have? What do we have? There you go. There we go. You've got the uh, tunnel going directly under this side. Could that have something to do with what's happening? Oh, I'm going, going off, going off the, off the grid there. I mean, it's just another element, another thing to consider. So you've got the tunnel there. You've got this whole complex here. You've got water next to it. We'll jump in and we'll zoom and have a look. And you have, oh, I'm trying to get, I don't want to get in the tunnel. I want to get on the, the street. There you go. That adds an element of channel, challenge. Yeah, come on, get me on the corner. Oh, come on. Not having any luck here with this one. We'll go here on the street. We'll go here on the street. We'll just go for a walk. So you see, you've got these little little ones, just you know, two story places. And if we go further up the street, we can see. We can see here's the green tree complex. And there you go. So it's a big, big complex, guys. And Channel Seven, there's streaming footage of it from. Uh, from you know their helicopter, you can see the police are there investigating. We'll jump ahead. I mean, you can just get an understanding of the scale of the complex. Of the complex. So if you're in one of these buildings here and it's, you know, body corporate, then everyone else will be uh, stuck for the financial issues associated with it. So let's have a look. Let's jump to this article and see what they have to say. Because there are a lot of construction issues in, well, in all of Australia, definitely in New South Wales. It's coming to light. There's, there's actually been changes to legislation with regards to responsibility that I'll talk about. I'll plan to do a video on that tomorrow. I've had some stuff sent through to me, which hopefully could address some of these issues in the future. But you're going to have so many buildings with inherent problems. So residents are evacuated from an apartment building in Ashfield and Sydney's inner west in the early hours of Friday morning due to fears about cracking in the block near the West Connects motorway tunnel have been allowed to return after inspectors deemed it safe. Firefighters and police were called to a six unit three level building in the Green Trees residential complex on Knoxdale Street 3.30 a.m. after residents reported cracking in one of the units. So could it just be settlement cracking and they've overreacted which you can't blame people for being concerned now. You can't blame people for being concerned and you know that's going to really dash confidence in this sector, isn't it? Up to 10 residents were evacuated to a nearby community center and an exclusion zone was set up around the building. Fire and rescue crews from across Sydney's inner west and as far south as Liverpool attended the call out. 
the residents were allowed to return before 9am once building inspectors had finished their work. New South Wales Police Regional Emergency Management Officer Philip Bowe said inspectors had deemed the damage to be non-structural and the residents were allowed to return. There is no immediate or no imminent threat of the building collapsing and has possibly been a common problem throughout the building during its lifetime, he said. Okay. Earlier reports to emergency services had indicated that brickwork in the building had started to show cracking and internal doors were stuck shut due to the building deterioration. So it could just be... It could just be the building. <laughs> it could just be it's not been maintained properly. It could be maybe some settlement issues. But Mr. Bowe said damage to one corner unit was limited to a number of cracked tiles on the floor, which popped up and were deemed safe at this stage. Specialist firefighters from Liverpool Fire Station had set up laser measuring devices to monitor for further building movement. The building is near where the new M4 East tunnels link to Parramatta Road and the new M4 East is part of the 16.8 billion West Connect Toll Road project. New South Wales Transport Minister Andrew Constance said initial engineering advice indicated the cracking was localised and unrelated to the tunnels. As a precaution, further assessments are being carried out and we will continue to provide any assistance that's required. So, I mean, there you go. You've got... It could just be maintenance. It could just be stuff. Tiles popping up. But, I mean, it's... it's well, it makes a lot of sense to be cautious, doesn't it? Homeowners who live above the West Connect tunnels in parts of the inner west, such as North Stratfield, have previously blamed tunnel work for gaping cracks appearing in the walls of their houses. The evacuation of Opal Tower on Christmas Eve 2018, followed by Mascot Towers in Sydney's southwest in June last year, also heightened concerns about the structural integrity of apartment buildings. Those in incidents led to new building and construction laws, including greater powers for the New South Wales Building Commissioner. The State Transport Agency said government engineers have been on site at the Ashfield Complex early on Friday to determine what had caused the problem. Transport for New South Wales and West Connect will assist with any investigations if required. The new M4 tunnels will continue to operate as normal. The Green Trees building manager said her priority was the safety of the residents. There is nothing at this point to be alarmed about she said so there you go there you go it looks like it looks like it's not a structural issue it could be a maintenance issue localized to one area you may have some water ingress coming in water ingress coming in causing some damage maybe some swelling underneath maybe some swelling at the edges and it popped up or maybe some drummy or just some dodgy tile work there's a whole lot of issues that can be associated with buildings like this and that's why you need to really do your due diligence when you get in there. You need to do your due diligence when you get in there. You need to get a proper inspection. Now, building like this is going to be less complicated than others. But the challenge this faces is that you're part of this huge complex. And you've got the issues of having car parking underneath. Anything subterranean, anything car parking adds an element of, well, complexity to it. You've got waterproofing issues. You've got water ingress issues. You've got potential or well, increased potential for concrete cancer. And then that can snowball what could be a, a reasonable, reasonable repair and maintenance to something much larger. So it's just something to keep in mind. Definitely something to keep in mind. So this is one we'll have to follow up and see if it's just a one-off thing. Maybe heightened vigilance on the part of the occupants. But I'd rather people are... A little bit more vigilant now than well we have a disaster speaking to a certified the other day in some ways australia has been really lucky because we've had all these issues you know you've had mascot you've had otto you've had zetland joshua sugar cube just that i've got here on the map you've got stuff all around you know verve in newcastle you've got stuff in brisbane everywhere construction issues and they'll always appear there'll always be issues because every time you have a building it is a unique work of art it's not like it's not like a mass produced car. They're unique conditions, unique challenges. You've got unique unique group of people working on them often as well. 
I, I think a lot of the potential for, for dodginess and pushing off blame needs to be addressed and that needs to be accounted for. I would argue we need to arm the average person with more information. What one, one step I would make right away, right away would be to push for free ASIC searches so you can see who you're buying off to make sure that they're not dodgy. But going back to this, you know, if you're looking at one of these buildings, get in the basement, look for defects, look for patching, look for signs of concrete cancer. So, but with all these disasters, there hasn't really been a loss of life. So that's the good thing at the moment. Anyway, guys, thank you all for watching. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. Have you worked on this building? Are you familiar with it? Do you live there? Do you think it's going to be just a small problem or we'll hear it again? I mean, I tell you, I'd rather, I'd rather be in one like this than in, a, you know, mascot. Because at the very least, there's more land. As always, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. You can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin. You can buy our merch from Heiser Says. You can use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint. Or you can support us via PayPal. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you next time.